Hello everybody, my name is Alan from Sauber Lab, and today will be another video about Home Assistant. In this video specific, we're going to show how you can install Home Assistant through NAS. But before we start to ask Alan, simple, I can use one of the Docker containers in the true NAS to run this Home Assistant. And the answer is no, we're not going to do it. We're going to use a virtual machine that will have the Home Assistant installed. And this is interesting because if you use the Docker or the container option for Home Assistant, you have a limited options and you cannot run in the full potential. But if you run in a virtual machine, you can run as a full potential and that they will develop a good potential for you. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're going to show in this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave a like, consider if you are subscribed for the channel. If you're not subscribed, then let's understand a little bit more about it. So before we start to explain what is Home Assistant, we need to understand why we want to run Home Assistant through NAS. And the answer is simple. Imagine that you already have through NAS in your house, it's running 20 by 7, and then you can use this through NAS for something else. And you don't need to share all your performance, all your system, you only need to use a fraction of it to run your Home Assistant. In this way, you can have automation and you can have lots of integrations. And then come Home Assistant. Home Assistant is the way that, or the OS, that you can control everything in your house. All the smart device can connect only for one place, and from there, you can send command, you can set some actions, you can make automizations, and continue on. So if you come here on my screen, you can see that Home Assistant have over 2,600 integrations, and we can check those, but you can do it your time and check if the integration that you need it's there. Also, you can run this one in different system. To understand what system that you can run, you can need to go here in Get Start and you go in the installation. Before you click installation, you have a lots of different tutorials and how to do guides for each stage. But anyway, we're gonna install it. So we click installation and here they give different methods. They say that the easiest way will be plugin for a home system green other one will be Raspberry Pi and continue on. In my case, I run in Raspberry Pi, but you don't need to run in Raspberry Pi if you already have your TrueNAS running there without all the use of your system. So in this way, you can install Home Assistant with TrueNAS. But before we start to install it, let's go all the way down and try to understand why I want to use a virtual machine to do it instead of a container. So if you use a container, you have a limitation of applications. You cannot do all the usage of your home system, either in container, either in core. You can use a supervisor, but sometimes if you don't configure it well, they will not work. And also why you don't use simply a virtual machine that you can backup, you can do everything that you want. So in this way, we're gonna show how to install home system OS. And if we come here, the way that you're gonna follow will be other systems, principally for virtual machines. So I click here, View tutorial and they will give a lot of information for me but what I'm more key to understand is uh, what kind of image that I need. One of previous video I show how you can install VirtualBox, other video install in a small genus using this option, now is the time to use this third option that will be KVM or Proxmox. So basically the same image that you can use in your Proxmox, you can use your KVM. KVM will be a virtual machine for Trinos, so we can use it. Before we start to download and set up anything, we need to understand what's the minimum requirement for my virtual machine. So as minimum requirement, I need to have two gigabytes of RAM memory, I need to have two CPUs or two virtual cores, and I need to have 32 gigabytes of storage. I think for a true NAS, everything is quite simple, quite small, so now we can jump in the true NAS and try to understand how I can do this installation. Also, they give some instructions how you can set up different options, but this one don't help so much, it's easy to look for my videos. Of course, it's interesting to see what I'm doing. Now, if I come here my true NAS, here is my true NAS, this true NAS is running revision 23.10, and this one is running in a physical computer. This computer has an old CPU, it's i5-4590 with four cores, 
and they use basically enough of my system. Also, they have 16 gigabytes of run memory, and here will be my storage and my network. What is interesting to remember, don't try to run in a virtual machine this true NAS, and that's after try to run a virtual machine inside this true NAS because not work. I tried to make this video doing this stage, but it didn't work the way that I expect, so I suggest you to use a physical computer. If you want to run true NAS in a Proxmox, run Home Assistant in Proxmox. If you want to use a virtual box, run Home Assist directly in virtual box. Don't try to virtualize another virtual machine because it will not work. So in this way, we know what system that we have. First stage that we need to do is to understand what kind of storage that we have. So you need to have 32 gigabytes of storage free. In my case, I have 445 gigabytes free and I have only one pool. In this case, I'm using only one hard drive, what's not interesting because it don't have any RAID control. So if this hard drive is gone, all my data is gone and I don't want to do it. Also, I don't have any kind of uh, cache or anything, so they will not have a better performance, but it's only for test, it's totally fine. And here the health of my hard drive is totally fine as well. So I match the first requirement. I have uh, 32 gigabytes of uh, storage. Also, I have uh, 13 gigabytes of run memory free, so I have more than two. And I have basically four cores, so I can dedicate two of those for my system. Next stage, I need to come here in my data set. Here in data set, I need to create a data set dedicated for my virtual machine. I cannot click in this data set option because not work, I need to add a Z, vol or Z volume. So now I click here and they will appear this page. Now I need to define the name of this Z volume. I will put as a VM because it will be all my virtual machines there. Comments, I can define a comment, and here it's quite important for you to define the size of this ZVOL. In the case, we are running a home system, so this ZVOL needed to be minimum of 32 GB, so we'll put 35 GB to have a little bit extra, but 32 is totally fine. I can, for size, or I can do any other configuration, but the standard one is totally fine for me, and I will put save. Now the red allocate 35 gigabytes of storage for me, and here it's the VM ZVOL red for me. Next stage, I can come here in network and I can set up another network. Supposedly I wanted to make a bridge network, but in this case I will not do it because we'll have only one virtual machine for my system, and if I connect directly for this internet, it will be totally fine. But if you want to insulate your system, you always can create another virtual network or bridge and that connect your virtual machine to that bridge. Now we need to download the image and install it. Remember I don't need to physically drop it. The best way will be come here in the system shell and we're gonna download this image. To download this image it's quite simple. First thing we need to pull the image from the home assistant website. So first thing we're gonna use sudo w get and I come here my home system and I will click to copy link come here and I will insert this image remember it's really important you focus for the revision that you're gonna run because the next stages or next step will depend on the revision that you define so now I will put enter they will ask the password for the admin I will set my password and I put enter. Once that I put enter, they will start to do the download and that's uh, all the image will be fully downloaded to my system. So let's wait, they finish to download. Once that finish to download, I need to remove this exif extension from my image. So I will use the follow step. sudo and zx that will remove this zx and that will use exactly the same revision of my home assistant that I just downloaded. Remember this one and this one need to match. If you're not matching it means that they do not follow this step. So pay attention and then I can run it. Now if I select ls I will have this same file without this zx because I read download a few times they will have more files but you need to look for this zf. Now is this image that we're gonna convert and create in the CVO. 
So now I will run sudo kemur image convert and that uh, this name of image needed to match exactly with my configuration. Also, this specific path needs to match with my configuration. If you're not sure what is this, so it will be dev, zvol, will be exactly the same for all, and here will depend on your pool. So if I come here in my dataset, select, here I select the dataset that I wanted to copy or to save my image, and if I look, the path will be home slash vm. Exactly this reason that I put home slash vm. Now I can put enter. Once that I put to run this specific step, my image will start to be converted. This conversion could take a few minutes, so let's wait. You're gonna know when it's finished because you're gonna have this same prompt command for the next line. So let's wait. The image has just been converted, so now I have admin to NAS again. I can come here in my virtual machine and now we're gonna start to create our virtual machine. To do it, we're gonna click add the virtual machine and here we're gonna set up what kind of operating system that I want. Because Home Assistant run with Debian, so we're gonna select Linux. Now we're gonna name this image. In my case, we'll put has, that will be Home Assistant OS, and here will be Home Assistant. Now, the clock, I will put UTC because I want it to be outside for my computer. Method of boot will keep exactly the same, UEFI. And now, blind, I don't change anything and I define the password. This password will be required if you want to display the information. So now we can put next and here will be the configuration of my CPU. So I can select that I want at least two cores or two CPUs. If I select less, they will not work as expect. So leave minimum as a two. Another thing that's required, it's leave minimum as a two GB. Now we need to define CPU mode. I can select some specific mode, but it's the easiest way it's put pass through. It means that the CPU configuration will be exactly the same as the host. If you have Intel, it will be an Intel CPU instead of you define a specific option of CPU. Now we can put next, here will be the disk, because we just import that image, we need to choose an existing disk, I select as a virtual zero, and I select the disk that I just import. If you don't have any disk to import, or don't have any existing disk, it means that that step in the shell that you did, didn't work as expect. If you configure everything correct, you should have this image available for you. So now we're gonna put next, the network, I will leave exactly the same configuration, but I will select this specific EN01 network. This one, if I have a bridge, if I have any other kind of network, I can select the one that I want. But because I have only one, I don't need to create another one this stage, I select exactly the same that will be connect for my network card. Now I put next. Mid installation, I don't need because that image I already have my home system, so it's simple for me. Put next. GPU, my home system will not do so much use of my GPU, so I don't need to configure it. I can put next. And now I can save. Once that you save it, now we can start our virtual machine, and that's uh, we'll start the home system. What we need to understand? We need to understand that uh, this could take some minutes for you be able to see something, but then we can click in display. Once that click display, they will ask exactly the same password that we defined before. In my case, it will be one, two, three, and put OK. Now they will start all the step to start the home system. And this one could take a few minutes, depend what system that you have, or a few seconds. So let's wait for him to start the system. You know that the system start and is working because you have your IP v4 and also you have this URL. Principally look for this IPv4 because then you're gonna have access outside from TrueNAS, so anything, anywhere in your network. So now we need to choose this IP address, 192.168.1.59. This because I already have another home assistant run my house and that they will have a conflict if I try to do only this one. If you have only one home assistant, you don't need to do anything, you can only connect this one, but in my case, I will need to choose this one to avoid conflict with the other one. So let me tape and port that I use, it's 8123. 
this stage you know that home assistant is working because they are preparing the home assistant this one could take up to 20 minutes to be ready for you and after this one you can set up your password your location and all your base configuration and go step by step to make this home assistant more usable for you if you want to understand those step by step or initial configuration look for one of my play sleep what i explain about home assistant there have a lot of it explain different interactions or different optimization different things that you can do for a system so if you like this video and think that was interesting please don't forget to leave your like consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed and see you next time bye